Okay, at this point, we're going to install our thermostat. Now, when I pulled the original Nissan one out, they had actually put RTV on this channel here and had it around. Now, if you look at this, you're going to notice that there's also a recess channel. That has to get filled with RTV or it will become a leak point because, unfortunately, the gasket doesn't have ribs for that. And another thing, this is directional. It only goes on one way. I'm not going to put a lot here because I just don't frankly want a lot here. I just want enough to create a bond. You know, unfortunately, this were kind of winging a little bit. You know, books don't teach you about these kind of things. You have to learn them on your own. My suggestion is you follow exactly how you've seen it. If there was RTV here when you pulled it off, then there should be RTV here when you put it back together. You're just not going to use a lot, that's all. Okay, you should get a little bit that squishes out, it's okay. Even if it's a little off, that's not going to hurt anything. Because this is a tri top, not a single dual top. Okay, now the next thing. Let's get to the Felpro gasket side of the service. Here's the only gasket that's available for this. Whew, look at that. One way and one way only. Yeah, I'm having to do this one a little bit different. First of all, I'm working on a car in my house. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and get this gap filled in. I will make one continuous bead ring all the way around. Then I'll come up around, come up around, come up around. Now I'm not going to worry about putting any on the gasket surface side because this will have plenty. And again, this is directional. Okay, so one thing about RTV, you know, and Tex will argue this with you. I just put it back to work, don't let it cure. Me, I don't do that. Not on these kind of jobs. That is a little tricky, not too bad though. Okay, as you can see, I have a little bit of squeeze. I'm gonna let that cure, and then once we get cured, then I will do the final torque. That, that's the best way I've found to do these, is not to torque them right off the bat. So let them cure, and then do the final torque. You wanna get enough that squeezes out so you get the air pockets done. But other than that, do not torque this until after this is cured. Okay, so I got a fire going. I'm going to let this cure for a bit, and then we'll go out to the car and actually install this big honking piece. Okay, I do apologize for the rain. There's nothing we can do about it. We're on deadlines. We have to get this car done. I'm going to speak a little louder and hope that you can hear it clearly. All right, I've given this some time to bake per se. I have a fireplace and it's time of year we use a fire so I use the fireplace to kind of make sure the RTV is sat. Now that it's sat I'm going to go ahead and torque it. I'm not going to use a torque wrench. I'm going to use the feel of the bolts. Because the bolts will tell you how tight you're going. And I just keep going around at least on the thermostat side until I feel the bolts start to give me some really good fight. Now you do not want to get brawny on this. As you can see I am using a little wrench. This doesn't require no more than about three pounds of torque. Because as you tighten it you'll lose a little bit until you get it about equal feel is what you're going for.
Okay, so that's torque. Now let's go to the back plate. This one I'm going to go side to side first. Same thing. I'm going to go cross next. These I'm going to put a little extra on, but not much. These are going to be about three and a half pounds versus three. And unfortunately, you can't really tighten this from the installed position. You can get to most of them, but this cover will not pop off as we learned. We actually have to go through the thermostat housing hole to actually get this to pop this way. Okay, that completes the torquing of the thermostat bypass housing. The other last thing to note on this housing deal, I'm going to put an arrow in now because I'm holding this in one hand, but that port right there actually has a special washer that has to go there because it's used, I do believe, as a bleed port more than anything else. But this will flow fluid. This hole flows fluid if you don't put the copper back in there. The bolt you're going to be looking for is going to be looking like this right here. But anyway, it has a copper and it's a size 10 with a copper. I don't know how well that camera is going to get that, but this has to go back in there. And with thread sealer. Okay, well we got the ultimate pretty much done for this wrap. I'll show you the part that we reinstalled that was on the bench. See where the blue is. This is a wet gasket. You have to basically do this in steps. But meanwhile, we got another problem we found the major oil leak. When someone replaces the sugar, they didn't replace the O-ring, and it just drips oil just like it said. And it's done it for a long time. We cleaned it up, we just made it apparent. But if you look down at the bell housing, you can tell this has been going on for how long I've stripped it up. A little bit of our mess in the water. That's okay, that's gonna happen. But we'll see this one again. We're gonna be fixing this oil leak, but she's gotta get back to work so we don't have time to fix it this time around. But as you can see, it's running. We got the water system hooked back up. We're burping it right now. Other than that, uh, we're going to send this thing off. If you like what you've seen with these little short clip jobs, click like. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.